Hello everybody, welcome back to Victoria 3. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to fix the Ottoman Empire. More specifically, what I mean is we will be trying to remove the Sick Man of Europe modifier. This is a debuff that gives us a minus 33% prestige debuff, which sucks in itself, but it's actually not that bad to work with. And we also have outmoded bureaucracy, which gives us a minus 25% hit to our bureaucracy and a minus 25% hit to our taxation capacity, which is actually kind of brutal. Now, the bad thing about this is after 20 years, if we do not get rid of the sick man of Europe modifier, we will be hit with the dead man of Europe event, which is kind of brutal. It's not the end of the world, actually, if it does happen to you. Basically, what's going to happen is your leader will die, you will become an unrecognized power, and all of your subjects will become independent. And on the flip side of that, if we are actually able to get rid of the Sick Man of Europe, we get a choice on a pretty strong buff. So I'm going to be showing you how to work through all of the Tanzimit journal entries. I'm going to be telling you which ones I think you should target, which ones I think you should leave off and do later. I will not be showing you how to do every single one of the Tanzimit journal entries, though I will be explaining how to do the two that I do not partake in, because not all of them are created equal, some are way easier to do than others, and I'm going to be showing you a method that I found to be pretty effective. So, in order to get rid of the Sick Man of Europe modifier, we are going to have to complete four out of the six Tanzimit journal entries. So, starting at the top, we have Reclaim Syria. All this is, is that we are required to go back and reclaim all of these states that the Egyptians owned that we used to own. If you come over and click on the strategic regions map, it's basically all of these green states right here that are not owned by us. If we can go to war with the Egyptians and retake all of these states, that journal entry will complete. For urbanization, we need at least 75% of all Ottoman states that are incorporated to have an urban center. If I come over to Eastern Thrace, or Constantinople, or Istanbul, whatever you want to call it, and I click on the Buildings tab, you're going to see that they have a level 5 urban center. For every 100 urbanization you have in a state, that state will gain one size of an urban center. So, because Eastern Thrace has 520 urbanization, they have a level 5 urban center. What we need to do is we need to make sure that 75% of all states have at least a level 1 urban center. If I come over to Baghdad, you can see that there is a level 0 urban center here, but we do have 65 urbanization. Urbanization comes from the buildings that you build in each state. If I click on the textile mill, you're going to see that this has plus 20 urbanization. So if you haven't figured by now, what we need to do is just build more buildings in these states. This is actually super easy. This is probably one of the easiest ones to do. After that, we have education reform. Now, this one I find to be weirdly difficult to complete, but for this one, we are required to have a level five university that has an occupancy that is greater than 90% and have the literacy rate of our people increased by 35%. Because the game starts out at 22.1%, this means we will need to have a literacy rate of 57.1% by the end of 20 years in order to complete this one. For suppressed separatism, all you need to do is prevent any secession movements from having progress greater than 50%. After that, we have army modernization. This requires us to have 250 battalions and have all of our barracks not set to irregular infantry, infantry focus, or cannon artillery. Finally, we have the bureaucratic reform. This one is the most difficult to do in my opinion, but it is the most rewarding. Getting rid of this one seems like it would be straightforward. We have to change our laws away from hereditary bureaucrats and land-based taxation, and we cannot change to consumption-based taxation. We must also have bureaucracy greater than or equal to zero, and not about to enter a bureaucracy deficit. So the problems with fixing the bureaucracy problem become very apparent once you actually hover over some of these laws. If we come over to hereditary bureaucrats, we can see that changing to appointed bureaucrats is very unpopular because the local governors have a ton of influence in our government. 46.7% is a massive amount. If we come over to economic systems, all of these are also very unpopular with the current government because the local governors also oppose them. If you come over to the taxation laws, you can see that the same phenomenon has followed us here as well. The local governors oppose changing pretty much every law that we need to change. So, 
In order to do this, we're going to have to strip all the power away from the local governors. First thing we're going to do is we're going to boot them out of the government and take away their direct power. Second, we are going to start suppressing them. Now, if you hover over their clout number, you will see a bunch of modifiers in here actually showing what is causing their clout to be so high. Their leader trait, experienced political operator, is a plus 10% buff. This is not something we can directly change. However, under it, we have Nadir Pasha. Lieutenant General. This is a general in our military who is associated with the landowners. That would be this man right here. He has a local governor interest group and he has a general position. So what we're going to do is we are going to fire him. And that is going to reduce their influence modifier by 10%. So that's a quick 10% buff gone. Now, another way we can reduce this is by bolstering other groups. There's only so much of the pie to go around and if we give more portions to other people, that will reduce the portions that they have themselves. So I am going to bolster the rural folk and the intelligentsia. While I am on the screen, I am also going to come over to my ruler and I'm going to grant him command of the military. That is going to give his political alignment of the intelligentsia a plus 25% buff. Now, because there's only so much cloud to go around, that means if we promote some of these other generals that have different interest groups, they will gain more clout in the government, which will in turn strip power from the local governors. So we are going to promote as many people as we can who are not associated with the local governors, and we are going to do that until we run out of excess bureaucracy. Now, another way that we can bolster certain interest groups is by giving that interest group more money. The easiest one to do this is probably the industrialist because they will become more powerful as we industrialize ourselves. So the next thing we're going to do is come over to the budget tab. We're going to crank taxes up to five because we need money. We're going to also crank our government wages up to five for a 10% authority bonus, which adds to above 100, which means we can get a free 8,000 pounds for only 100 bureaucracy, which is actually more than what it takes to upgrade those wages. And we also get buffs to our interest group approval ratings. We're also going to add more consumption taxes just so we can get our economy really booming i'm gonna go with services and clothes for this one that's gonna give us a nice healthy fifty thousand pounds per week and at this point i'm going to set everything to automatically expand but in this one i am actually going to build some strategic buildings and prioritize them before the automatically expanded ones so go ahead and set everything to automatically expand and then before i let that go i'm going to queue up two construction sectors I am also going to build a single iron mine in every single state that does not currently have one. And I am also going to do the same thing for the coal mines. You want your construction sectors to build first, and then your mines, and then everything else that automatically expands because we're going to need way more iron and we're going to need way more coal because I do also intend to change my construction sector method to iron frame buildings. I am also going to research romanticism in the technology tree. Now, because it seems like I'm already getting some technology spread on romanticism, I'm not actually going to do that one first. Instead, I'm going to move on to my second one. But if this does not happen for you, research romanticism first, then you're going to come and research currency standards. And then after that, do empiricism, and then you can do whatever you would like. This is because some of the laws we are looking to pass require these technologies. Romanticism is required to change your economic system law. We are going to be trying to change over to agrarianism because it is the one that we have the best chance to change to. And we must change that before changing our taxation law because it is required to not be on traditionalism. We also need currency standards so that we can change to per capita taxation in the future. Hereditary bureaucrats do not actually require us to research anything, though some of the other ones that we will be wanting to change to later, like school systems, will require us to have empiricism. So. That's why those three are the first ones that I recommend you do. After that, you can do whatever production method you want. So after all that's set up, I'm going to pause for just a little bit so I can see what the current clout balance seems to be in the government. So I'm going to unpause and I'm going to wait just a second to see what my government looks like. All right, so I let the game run for about six months and then I paused again to see the new balance of power in the government. Looks like the local governors are still quite powerful, though not as powerful as they used to be. So at this point, we're going to hover back over the clout number that they have, and we're going to see what else is buffing their power. Looks like there are four laws that are giving them extra power. Monarchy, hereditary bureaucrats, peasant levies, and slave trade. I'm going to give you a spoiler and say that there's pretty much no way that you're going to change monarchy anytime soon. So we are going to be targeting the three laws of hereditary bureaucrats, peasant levies, and slave trade, 
try and get rid of those so that we can get rid of the power of the local governors. The easiest one to change first is probably going to be the peasant levies, as it is actually more popular than not to change over to a professional army. The problem lies in actually getting people who support this into the government. So there is actually a pretty good chance that we could pass this law if we could get the right people in government. If we hover over it, it is currently grayed out because the intelligentsia really don't care about a professional army at all compared to peasant levies. So to fix this problem, we are going to reform our government and put the rural folk in the government. This is going to decrease our legitimacy slightly, but it will still be enough for us to pass laws. We're going to come over to laws and we're going to try and pass professional army. If we are unable to pass professional army, we can also flip flop to national militia. This one is not quite as nice, but it still does the job of reducing the clout of the local governors. So we're going to try and start off with professional army. So we're going to try and pass this law. So it looks like it has a 14% chance to succeed, a 28% chance to advance, and a 56.9% chance to debate. So this is the reason that this doesn't always work because there is always a chance that your attempt to pass laws failed because it is 100% randomness based. So there is always that small little chance that it does not pass. However, there are a few ways we can mitigate this. The first one being is that every now and then your people will make a push to get a certain law passed. And one of the ones that I have noticed to be very common early on is indeed a military reform. You can jump on that one and it will be a great opportunity to pass that law because it gives a massive buff to the likelihood that the law will pass. But we haven't gotten one of those yet, but if you do get them, I do recommend you take it. They will appear over on this screen here, so keep an eye for that. Okay, well, I managed to get super lucky and passed on the very first try with a 17% chance of success. Now, because we were able to pass that law so quickly, the power of the local governors is reduced drastically. They are now less than 30%, and if you remember at the beginning of the game, they were above 40. Now, once you get over the first hurdle, it is going to be much easier to reduce their power in the future, because they will be less and less influential and not as able to support their will. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to attempt to pass appointed bureaucrats. The chances of this actually happening are pretty low, but we will do this until we can move on to the one that is the most likely because we are still waiting on research to happen. Until Romanticism is done researching, we're going to attempt to get appointed bureaucrats through. There is a chance that we will get lucky, but more than likely this will fail to pass and it will stop and it could even cost you a little bit of money if you get really unlucky with it, but we are going to attempt it anyway. All right, looks like we got moderately lucky again. We have managed to pass the appointed bureaucrats law on our second chance through. So we're actually doing quite a bit better on this than it normally takes. Do not expect laws to pass this easily. It is usually a massive headache to try and go for this, but our local governors have now been reduced to 24% clout, which is enough for us to start really bullying them around and doing whatever we want. As soon as we are done researching romanticism, we are going to try and change our economic system over to agrarianism. There is almost as much endorsement as there is disapproval, so this is going to be our next best likely chance to change. Okay, I just finished researching romanticism. That means I'm going to come back over to my politics tab, go back to laws. Traditionalism, we are going to try and change that to agrarianism. There is only an 18% chance of success, but it is worth trying to take. Do be cautious, however, because if you make the landowners too angry too soon, they will start a revolution against you if they have enough clout to and they become angry enough. All of the laws that we are changing are going to make them angry. That is not something you're going to be able to avoid in the long run, but you only want to make them angry after their influence has been decreased substantially. So keep that in mind. Even if you do get a revolution, it's also not the end of the world. You will probably be able to beat them, but... Try not to start a revolution if possible. Well, I'm not exactly sure what's been going on today. This is the best luck I've ever had trying to go for this run. So I managed to pass agrarianism on the very first turn, which means we can move on to our land-based taxation. Like I say, this will have to wait until after you finish researching currency standards, but because I had technology spread and was able to use that on my romanticism, I was able to research this one early, so I already have it. So we're gonna go ahead and try and research this one. Now, you will also get many of these mining accident notifications. This may sound like a bad thing, but in this game, it actually allows us to do something that is beneficial for us. It actually allows us to bolster some of the interest groups. We can either choose from the industrialists, the trade unions, or the rural folk. For this one, I'm going to bolster the industrialists because they are actually very powerful, and if you can get them on your side, they are actually very helpful later on. They are the ones that I'm going to want for late game, so I'm going to choose them. 
All right, you shouldn't have very much problem passing per capita taxation because once you get to this point, the local governor should be very weak and not have enough power to actually prevent you from passing laws. So we're gonna hit okay. And the only thing left for me to do to fix the outmoded bureaucracy is to not have a bureaucracy deficit. So we're gonna build a few bureaucratic administration buildings and then we're gonna be good. Also, once you pass per capita taxation, you're going to have way more of an income. So we're gonna build way more construction sectors so we can move on to the second part of this tutorial. The next thing we're gonna do is focus on urbanization, army modernization, education reform, and suppress separatism. I know you do not need every single one of these in order to complete it, but I'm going to show you the best way of doing this anyway. So first things first, we're going to go back to our politics tab and we're going to stop bolstering and stop suppressing all of these interest groups. We don't need to change any more laws, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to take this authority and use it for other stuff. Now with the excess authority, you really have two options. You can either add more consumption taxes or use decrees to promote social mobility in your entire country and get your literacy rate up. Personally, I recommend just going down the straight up money path, add a lot more consumption taxes, forget about the education reform. I'm just gonna add a bunch of consumption taxes. I'm gonna take the 700 and I'm just gonna take whatever I can to get rich. Let's go with grain, liquor, and tea. And we now have a good 73,000 pounds per week. And what I'm gonna do with that is build way more construction sectors and way more barracks all over the country. That way we can contribute towards our urbanization and our military at the same time. A lot of your states without urban centers are going to be in the far east over here. So that is where we're going to prioritize building. We're just going to queue stuff pretty much anywhere that says urban center size zero. We're going to try and get everywhere up to over 100 urbanization. We only need it to be in 75% of all of our states. So that's actually not that difficult. We can knock this out pretty quickly. Though, make sure to be sparing with the construction sectors as they can eat away a lot of your surplus and then you'll have a deficit and you'll have a problem with automatic expansion. Just go easy on the construction sectors. Don't go easy on the barracks though. We need at least 250 of those bad boys in total, so get to cranking those out. Now, once you've got most of those queued up, you're going to come over to your buildings tab, going to come over to development, and you're going to try and change your barracks production method to line infantry and mobile artillery. For me, I haven't actually gotten the technology of mobile artillery yet because I've gotten my laws to pass way faster than they normally do. So if you need to, go ahead and research the technology required for that. The two that you're going to need for that, you're going to need line infantry and you're going to need Napoleonic warfare. You can go ahead and research those manually if they haven't done it already. All right. Doing those two together shouldn't take you very long to do it all. The urbanization and military reforms are two of the easiest ones you could do. After that, you can simply wait for suppressed separatism to finish because it takes 15 years. Or if you would like, you can target education reform. If you would like to take away some of the consumption taxes, though it may hurt your economy if you built to the cap with construction sectors. And if you would like to, now is probably the best time to try and reclaim Syria if you feel up to it. So after those 15 years are finally up, you're going to get the reorganization event. And this is where you no longer have the potential to get the Dead Man of Europe event. Instead, you get to choose from one of these four choices. You can go with some pretty nice buffs for your army offense and defense at home and innovation gain for the military tab. You can go with a bunch of claims in the Balkan areas. You can go with urbanization center building throughput and construction sector building throughput. Or you can go with a bureaucracy buff. I usually go with urbanization because at this point, I'm already building a ton of stuff. I'm just doing whatever, but you can really choose from whichever one that you want. All right, that's going to conclude this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future, I'm going to be making it, so feel free to subscribe. If there is a country that you would like to see done in the future, be sure to leave that in the comment section below. I do read every single comment, so if I see a lot of support for any particular video, I will be adding it to the polls that I put out on YouTube. And I do indeed use those polls to decide which video I will be doing next. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you can be notified whenever those polls come out. The videos that I choose to do are based on the results of those polls, so if there's anything that you particularly want to see, leave it down in the comments, I'll put it in the poll, and if it gets enough votes, I will make the video. So with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.